All right, let's give a big hand for Isaac. All right, so my idea is my uh, my idea is like um, a little movie called Cryptic King. Um, so yeah, it's basically fantasy realism with the idea of trust, both on a personal level and recently a political level. So Cryptic King takes place in this sort of like mystical realm, um, sort of like kind of like a Narnia kind of sense. And the only way to enter this realm is through a cave in Turkey. No need to delve into that further. And they basically Mythica consists of mythological creatures from the human psyche that have come to live here. And they're essentially led by this individual known as the Cryptic King. Essentially, it could be any sort of mythical creature who has the ability to have the ability of other mythical creatures. And this is what, what actually kicks off the story um, with uh, my main character, Philip. And Philip is essentially this very jaded guy. And when you meet him, he is pretty much like very much like very selfish. Like he doesn't care for anyone, you know, he cares for himself, and he and it's mostly because he has very deep abandonment issues. So on a field trip to Turkey, he falls into a cave and finds himself in Mythica where he accidentally becomes a cryptic king. And at first he uses like his newfound power for like personal gain, mostly out of selfishness, but after like much like laying people into his little circle, he manages to open up and Develop into a pretty good leader, like despite all of the bad decisions he made initially. But there's a concert to, to those bad decisions because now a political party, Kalajiri, decides that they want to implement communist beliefs into a reformed government, and they decide to start a coup. So here are my characters. This is the one on the guy on the left will be Philip, and the guy on the right will be Lazarus. Philip, I would describe as I said, is very jaded, mostly because his father deemed him and his mother weak, and after his mother died of cancer, he was tossed from many homes, like many foster homes, and this gave him like a cynical view of the world. But after opening up, he has become a good leader and is willing to become like self-sacrificial to like fulfill his role and responsibilities as a the king. Lazarus, the antagonist, he's the leader of the political party I was talking about. And well, he's like, he may look very charming on the outside, but on the inside he's very malicious and is willing to kill anyone that gets in his way of his goals. Overall, though, um, a question I would ask all of you is, if you were offered one of the greatest powers in the world, what would you do with that power? Use it for personal gain, for helping others, or something else? Personally, I always love fantasy stories. Um, and But a lot of the heroes, you often see them as pretty good, even though, like, do weak circumstances. So I thought, okay, let's give a hero lots of negative traits and see how he develops from there. And a lot of, like... Um, my story's influence is a combination of both political and like action fantasy stories with a bit of psycholo a psychological touch to it. Um, it's based on my research in conspiracy theories, which I found is actually one of many factors in like between people and government mistrust. And I find that like that would be one way that like Legere can like try to get people to doubt in like Mythica's current government and allow them to rise into power. It's sort of, I think I would say Cryptic King is sort of like an expression of like both personal turmoil and like the nature of society as a whole, human or not. Notice you said earlier in the story he accidentally became your the cryptid king. Do yeah. you have any is there did you like write about it or was it just 
Yeah, actually, yeah, there's actually a reason why. So basically, um, in a uh, short form, what happens is that Philip is found by two residents who manage to take take him, like, give him a tour of the realm. And then he kind of slips away and actually touches the crown that gives the cryptic king with their powers. So as a result, he actually becomes a cryptic king. All right, Tyler. So was there a king before him then? Yeah, there's like generations of kings. But like, like right when he touched the crown, was there someone like that was sitting as king before? No, that, that king is dead. So, yeah, Jack. So you said to get to this realm, you had to like kill a turkey or something like that. No, you have to go to Turkey, and there's like a cave that goes. Oh, go to Turkey! Yeah, okay, I missed it. <laughs> like the country Turkey. <laughs> 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 Oh, cryptid is like um, a form of like um, specifically like lots of creatures of folklore. Um, you may know some like Mothman or the Jersey Devil. That's where cryptid comes from. Cryptzoologist is actually a thing, so that's one of the word. Um, did the crown itself influence him, or was it just his own selfish? His own selfish game. Oh, and Pers what drove him to? I did not. Yeah, I think mostly the secondary characters are help because often I would describe him as a very close character. He doesn't want like to let people in because like he just thinks that they're gonna get in his way. But it's by letting these secondary characters in, which is mostly people from the palace courts, he allows himself to change, grow, and actually take his responsibilities and role more seriously. Right? Uh, I think I saw it right time. Um, well, I was just gonna ask, like, once he became king, like, what, what problems did he face? Well, actually, it, it's actually problems he caused himself. Mo most of the time, he often like did like very selfish, like political decisions. Like, for example, like, uh, like, mo like mostly like, like keeping some like of like the uh, treasury money first for himself for like personal things that he never could have had in like the real world. And as, and as a result, like, these more political decisions kind of, like, destroyed the trust between people and government. Can you elaborate a little bit more on how it, like, relates to your research as a topic? Yeah. I think specifically what Wajiri's actions. Wajiri's actions are, like, usually what we see in some political parties. They use propaganda. The conspiracy theories are one. They kind of, like, spread rumors about, like, how the government is falling. And as that result, like more of the trust is like broken more than ever like but of course felt cost the most of the damage but would Jerry just like build off that damage all right mouse can you tell us what's the outcome of this is this a film is this an animation and what who did you want the audience to be if i were to make this a live action film personally i think it would be kind of an expensive endeavor i think sort of like what avatar way of water did like use a lot of 3d technology um, but of course, like the story is pretty important, though, so I still want to express that. But I, but I think animated would be another path I would go to because I think one of the biggest influences I had of the series would be um, Troll Hunters, um, a Netflix series um, produced by Gamero Del Toro, who happens to also be a filmmaker. So overall, though, um, if I were to make a live action film, I think if I were to consider the budget, I would be similar to Way of Water's budget. Um, if I were to make an animated series, like an animated ship, like a movie. Probably like you know, like I think I think it's probably kind of kind of lower though, but it's a pretty big budget because you know. Anime.